From Towers Field in Rochester, New York, on the campus of the University of Rochester, it's Ithaca College Bombers Baseball on Bombers Sports as the Bombers take the trip two hours north to square off with the U of R Yellow Jackets in a crucial conference three-game series starting with a doubleheader in Rochester today. I'm Eli Fishman alongside with you for the action all afternoon long. Ithaca currently sits in first place in the Western Division of the Liberty League, looking to get back on track this series and a crucial series, as I mentioned, because they're at nine and three, and just behind them in the Western Division at seven and two is Rochester, with one weekend left following this one before the crossover series. This is the most important weekend so far in the season for the Bombers, and in all likelihood, the top seed in the Western Division and the hosting rights in the crossover series is on the line in this three-game set. Nolan Sparks, the right-hander, takes his warm-up pitches for the University of Rochester. Here is the lineup he will face for the Ithaca Bombers, 9-3 in conference, play 19-8 overall in the season, led by Dave Alicente in his fourth year at the helm. Ethan McDonough leads it off in right field. Louis Fabo hits second. He's in left field. Camden Laney is the first baseman hitting third. Matt Curtis is his second baseman doing the cleanup today. Ethan Rothstein manages the hot corner at third base and hits fifth. Colin Shaddy hits sixth. He's the designated hitter in this one. Colin Feeney in center field hitting seventh. Tyler Puglisi is the catcher hitting eighth. And Riley Verratti rounds out the order at shortstop. Colin Laner on the bump today for the Bombers. And Nolan Sparks, the right-hander, taking his warm-up. Sparks is a Boston College commit. That's right, he's committed to transfer to the Division I level next year to continue his academic and athletic career. And Sparks has been excellent this season. 2-2 two two with a 3.38 ERA for the Yellow Jackets, who are 13-12 and on the season and 7-2 and in conference play. Coming off a win this past week against Brockport, here at Towers Field, 372 down the left field line, 395 to dead center, and 360 down the right field line. An all synthetic turf surface as Ethan McDonough digs in from the right side, and we are ready to go. Sparks the right-hander, looks in, gives the nod to Blosey, the catcher today for Rochester. First pitch, fastball, called strike right down the pipe to McDonough. The senior right fielder hitting 391 this season with an OPS over 1,100 in 15 total games played. As the right-hander sparks, rocks and fires, 0-1. Check swing, did he go around on the fastball on the outer third? No, he did not, says the first base umpire on the appeal. And the count goes 1-1. One one. McDonough with two homers this season, both of which coming last season, last series I should say, as the 1-1 one, one. fastball called strike at the top of the zone makes it 1-2. Last series against Bard, a doubleheader on Sunday on the South Hill. And McDonough with homers in both the day game and the nightcap of that doubleheader against the Raptors. Here's the 1-2 from Sparks. Breaking ball, wave and a miss for strike three. McDonough down on strikes. And Nolan Sparks with his first strikeout of the afternoon. Here's how the defensive alignment looks for the Rochester Yellow Jackets. All white uniforms, blue piping down the sides. With Rochester in a cursive lettering across the chest. And navy blue numbering in the outfield. Constantine Gregory lead him left to right. Is digging in as Louis Fabo. And he cranks the first pitch he sees into le deep left center. Tracing it back is Constantine a few steps. And he's under it for out number two. So the strikeout, the line out to left field. It was Constantine making the play in left. Yox is the third baseman for Rochester. Sammy B's tree is at short. Jackson Reed at second. Carl Ellison, Alec Ellison, I should say, at first. And behind the plate, Luke Blosey is digging in from the left side. The freshman, Camden Laney. For the Bombers, here's the first pitch from Sparks. Fastball just upstairs. And Sparks, probably going to talk about a lot throughout the course of this afternoon. But he is a high-profile arm. An All-American who pumps in the mid-90s, committed to Boston College. 1-0 to Laney. is a called strike with the fastball at the bottom of the zone. He's had some command issues so far this season, and in his career for that matter, but is one of the top pitchers in the nation, especially in the strikeout category. Here's the 1-1 pitch with two outs to Laney. Nobody on. It's a breaking ball at the bottom of the zone for a called strike to make it 1-2. For Sparks, he's 2-2, two two, 32 innings, 40 strikeouts. 
But I mentioned the command issues. That has come with 15 walks. Here's the stocky right-hander. Winds and delivers. One, two. Wave and a miss on the elevated fastball. Goes with the high cheese. And Laney swings through it. A one, two, three inning for Nolan Sparks in the first highlighted by book and strikeouts. And that will send us to the bottom of the first, but we will keep it right here on Bomber Sports as Colin Laner will take the mound for Ithaca, and he has been tremendous this season. Laner with a 4.18 ERA. He's 5-2 in eight total starts for Ithaca, so this will be his ninth, 51 and two-thirds innings of work, 50 strikeouts to 13 walks opponents hitting 241. Laner, one of the top pitchers in the conference, and a big story this season has been the pitching for Ithaca because we've talked endlessly about all the arms that the Bombers lost to graduation to the transfer portal this past season. And some underclassmen, in addition to Laner, have had to step up big time. And as we'll talk about throughout the course of this afternoon with game one and two, a reminder, this is a doubleheader tonight in games. You've got no Jack Collier in the rotation is he's been out due to injury. Collier had a 3-2-3 ERA and a 3-0 record before going down a couple of weeks ago. So in all likelihood, it'll be Jack Picozzi in game two against Rochester. And speaking of the Yellow Jackets, Joe Rita in his 23rd season at the helm for Rochester presents this lineup. Jackson Reed leads it off at second base. Colby Cruiser is the DHG hit second. Alec Ellison is the three hitter. He's at first base. Josh Later. Leadham, excuse me, is the four-hitter and the cleanup man. He's in right field. Rob Constantine in left field hits fifth. Quincy Yox is the third baseman, manning the hot corner, and he hits sixth. Luke Gregory hits seventh. He's the center fielder. Sammy Bezstry is the shortstop inning eighth. And Luke Blosey rounds out the order for the Rochester Yellow Jackets. Rita in his 23rd season at the helm. He's the six-time Liberty League coach of the year, coaching third base. For the Yellow Jackets is Jackson Reed will dig in for Rochester here in the bottom of the first to nothing nothing score as Laner the right-hander rocks and delivers here comes the first pitch to Reed and it's a fastball just upstairs checking his swing as Reed did not go around says the first base umpire so the count goes 1-0 Reed hitting 320 this season with an 896 OPS at the top of the order for Rochester. 1-0 pitch from Laner is roped right back up the middle for a base hit. Skipping through the turf to the center fielder Feeney, who chucks it in after a wide turnaround first base for Reed. And a leadoff single here in the bottom of the first for Rochester. And Reed stays blazing hot at the plate. And that brings up Colby Cruiser, the junior's designated hitter. Cruiser hitting 444 this season in limited games. Good speed for Reed off of first base, by the way. Dancing off the bag is Laner's first pitch to the left-hander. Is a fastball at the top of the zone for a call strike. And the count goes 1-0. Good speed on first base for Reed. He's 9 for 11 on stolen base attempts on the year. And as Laner, the righty, sets, takes a pure over to first in a pickoff attempt. Back in with a head-first dive on the turf is Reed. Laney over at first. Defensively for the Bombers in the outfield. Lewis Fabo in left. Feeney in center. Ethan McDonough in right on the infield. Rothstein at third. Brody at short as another pickoff attempt. Another head first dive just back in time is Reed. Matt Curtis is the second baseman today. Camden Laney over at first. And Tyler Puglisi does the catching for the Bombers behind home plate. As Laner looks over again at first, now comes home. Oh, one breaking ball is roped in a right field, ranging in, and to his left is McDonough, who tracks it down for out number one. Hard contact, but finds the glove of McDonough. Only had to take a few steps over to track it down for out number one. So one out and a runner on first for Alec Ellison, the senior first baseman, digs in from the right side, and he is the top hitter in this Rochester order with a closed off stance, bat waving back towards home plate, first pitch, breaking ball low. Off the turf and the count goes 1-0, almost like Jason Kipnis did back in the days with the now Cleveland Guardians, just bat all the way, poke as far as he could physically go towards the home plate umpire, waving with the knob, shifted towards home plate as the 1-0 fastball lays down the left field line and foul. Just a couple bounces to the left of the chalk and the count goes one and one. Just a head on it. And the count goes one one. 
With one out, Jackson read off of first base. No score here between Ithaca and Rochester. Up in Rochester, New York. As Lehner pauses, another stare over to first base where Reed with a dancing lead. A long pause. Another pier. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. Fastball wave and a miss. Got him with the elevated heat. And the count goes 1-2. and two. Lehner has been so strong this season. Opponents hitting 241 off of him, a 418 ERA at the top of this Bombers rotation. Deals the 1-2, breaking ball low and away. Puglisi keeps it in front of him. And the count goes 2-2. Two and two. Here at Towers Field in Rochester, a crucial three-game set opening up between the Bombers and the Yellow Jackets with one out. Here comes the 2-2. Fastball wave and a miss for strike three. On the outside corner, paints the fastball, gets Ellison to swing through it, and that's the first strikeout of the day for Laner. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. And Laner looking at Strand Reed on first base following the leadoff single. Brings up Josh Leadham, the senior right fielder. And the first pitch he sees is grounded left side. Brody backhanded short. Long throw on the diamond across to first. Can't be picked off the turf by Laney. Advancing up to third base will be Reed. A tough backhand play in the hole for Brody. The throw was short. Laney couldn't pick it out of the turf. Would have been a bang bang play regardless. Let's see how they put that in the scorebook. And it looks like it will go as an E6 on Brody. And inches away from getting out of it were the Bombers. But instead, it'll be runners on first and third with two outs. And the five-hitter, Rob Constantine, in from the left side. With lead him off of first, read off a of third, 90 feet away, and a scoreless game here in the bottom of the first. Here's the first pitch, a wave and a miss on the off-speed from Constantine. And the count goes 0-1. Constantine hitting 233 on the season with six RBIs. 14 games played, 11 starts. It's a pickoff attempt over to first base. Just a little lob for Laner, which Laney just picks up and chucks right back to him. Lead him with good speed off of first base. 20 stolen bases, actually, which leaves the team. It's top five in the conference. Is the 0-1. Breaking ball, runner off on the pitch. It's skied into shallow left field. Lewis Faba, the left fielder, ranges over a couple steps to his right. A few in, and he makes the play in shallow left to retire this side. One error, one hit, two runners left on base. 0-0 the score as we head to the top of the second inning on Bomber Sports. Back at the top of the second inning from Towers Field, scoreless between Rochester and Ithaca in a crucial conference series for both sides with the top seed in the Liberty League on the line. It's 4-5-6 due up for the Bombers, starting off with the right-hander Matt Curtis digging in against Sparks. 
who had bookend strikeouts as part of a 1-2-3 frame in the first. Curtis in from the right side. Here's the first pitch. Fastball called strike at the top of the zone. The Bombers cleanup man hitting 327 on the season with an 884 OPS. Playing second base today, a position he's not all that used to as well as the 0-1. Fastball fouled off, got a piece of it off the backstop behind home plate. And the count goes 0-2 with some high cheddar from Nolan Sparks, who, as we mentioned briefly in the first, he's been up to 96 miles per hour with a fastball that sits in the mid-90s in the past. And Sparks, the right-hander, comes home 0-2. Breaking ball, nub left side of the infield. Couple hops for Yox, who charges, throws across the diamond in time for out number one. And four straight retired to start off this ball game by Sparks. And one out in the top of the second to bring up Ethan Rothstein. Five hitter. And manning the hot corner today for Ithaca. He's bounced between shortstop and third base this year. And the Bombers with a lot of holes to fill in their lineup this series with numerous injuries as the first pitch is a breaking ball and dumped to the left side of the infield. Charging is the third baseman. Yox throws on a first just in time with a very nice off-balance play just to the left of the mound. Barehanded it, chucked it across the diamond. And two nice plays actually by Yox over at the hot corner on what have not been very hotly hit balls, just a chopper and that weakly hit grounder. And two quick outs here in the top of the second. Brings up Colin Shashati, the DH today, and from the right side. Here's the first pitch. It's a fastball at the bottom of the zone. A called strike. Shashati missed the last three games of last series due to a hand injury. But back in the lineup for a big series this weekend with Rochester. 0-1. Elevated heat with the fastball. Check swing. Yes, he did. And Shashati just swings through it. Kind of just waved at it, a half swing, but went around and the count goes 0-2. As Sparks looks in to blows, he gives a couple of shakes now the nod, and he sets as he always does, despite runners on, no runners on base, I should say. And two outs, and the breaking ball is chopped left side of the infield. Bestry, the shortstop, charges, throws on a first. A close play is what Shashati makes it, but just in time is the throw. Six straight retired for Nolan Sparks to start off this ball game. 0-0, we're all tied up as we head to the bottom of the second on Bomber Sports. Back in the bottom of the second inning, Colin Lehner back on to work for Ithaca as we are all tied up. 6 7 8 2 up in the Rochester order, starting with Quincy Yox. First pitch, fastball, wave and a miss by Yox, the third baseman today, hitting 250 on the season with a 754 OPS for the Yellow Jackets. His Lehner is 0 1. It is a fastball just inside to even it up at 1 and 1. On the Rochester senior third baseman. Yox, a native of Sedalia, Colorado, as the 1-1 fastball is laced in a deep left center field, sending Fabo back in front of the warning track. He leaps up, can't make the play, bounces off his glove, rolls all the way to the wall. And at second base, standing up with a leadoff double here in the bottom of the second inning is Quincy Yox. Second hit of the day for Rochester, and a man in, starting, in scoring position to start us off here in the bottom of the second. And that brings up Luke Gregory. And first, a mound meeting between Puglisi and Lehner. Gregory hitting 200 on the season, but limited at bats. He's only played in seven total games, gotten six starts behind the plate. It's a quick mound visit between Puglisi and Lehner. 
probably going over something with the pitch com. As the first baseman, Laney, will shade in, potentially expecting the bunt for Gregory here, who's got speed. Later, pauses in the delivery, peers over to second base now, showing bunt is Gregory, and misses. Looks like he was trying to pull back at the last second, and they'll say he did actually offer. It would have been a close pitch with the fastball on the outside corner regardless, and the count goes 0-1. With Yox, a dancing lead off a of second base. Brody, the shortstop, in and out covering. Laney, Laner gives a peer over, and out comes home. Trying to drop it down is Gregory yet again. Misses on the fastball upstairs in the zone for a ball. Back pick attempt by the catcher, Puglisi, who throws on a second base, where Brody tries to apply the, apply the tag, but back in standing is Yox. So a 1-1 count, and the defense on their toes for Ithaca. Expecting the bunt here, we'll see if Gregory tries to drop it down again 1-1. Here's the pitch. He shows bunt, pulls back. It's a breaking ball low and away, and the count goes 2-1. Gregory trying to move the runner over with Beastree, who's got a whole lot of power in the 8th spot in the Rochester order in the on-deck circle. Laner with a long look into Puglisi. Gets the sign, comes set. Gives a look over to second base, now comes home. Trying to drop it down again is Gregory. It's bunted foul just behind his own plate. Trickling underneath the feet of Puglisi. And now a 2-2 count. So Gregory is going to be swinging away. The senior from Ivyland, Pennsylvania. Up with no outs. And a runner on second base and a 2-2 count here in the bottom of the second scoreless between Ithaca and Rochester. Here's Laner's 2-2. Breaking ball popped up on the infield just behind the second base bag. It's Curtis, the second baseman. Now it's Brody, the shortstop. Ranging all the way out, he drops the ball in shallow center. He was backtracking all the way into the shallow center field green turf. It tried to go for the older over-the-shoulder grab and drops it. To the second error of the game for Ithaca in only three outs so far. The E6 puts runners on first and second with no outs for the eight hitter Bees Tree. It's been two errors on Brawny so far today for an Ithaca team that has struggled in the error category so far this season. As Laner comes home, first pitch to Beastry, showing bunt, dropping it down the first baseline. It's a beauty. Laner, Laney picks it up, throws on a first base, not in time. It's a bunt single for Sammy Beastry. And the bases are loaded with no outs for the nine hitter, Luke Blosey. Bezdry, the freshman shortstop, with as perfect of a bunt as you can imagine. Right down the first baseline, about halfway between first base and home plate. As now a mound visit. As Bomber's assistant coach, Cooper Bellia, going out for a meeting with the entirety of the infield. So to summarize, a double in error. And actually, it looks like they're going to give a throwing error on Laney, the first baseman, for the third error of this game. Because the throw initially hit the runner, Bezstre, bounced off of him. Laney actually almost made the catch off the ricochet. But they're going to give an error to Laney. So three errors, and the nine hitter. And blows the up in the right-handed batter's box. First pitch, breaking ball, call strike at the top of the zone. So there have been more errors than outs, or as many errors as outs, I should say, for Ithaca on the E3. Bases loaded, no outs, as the 0-1 wave and a miss on the breaking ball. And the count goes 0-2 on Blosey with Jackson Reed, who's singled to start off his game, awaiting in the on-deck circle. Would have been a close play regardless. Curtis was actually covering the second baseman when Laney made the throw. As with the bases juiced, here comes the 0-2 pitch. Fastball dished upstairs, and the count goes 1-2. and two. And obviously, only 
one of these runners on base, which was Yox on third, reached via a legitimate hit, a pair of errors, and that would be the only earned run as of right now. As Lanner peers in, he now steps off the mound to get a reset of signs from Puglisi. Now he steps back on the rubber. Bombers in the navy blue tops, gray pants, with gray numbering and an Ithaca logo in all white across the chest. Is the one two breaking ball, waving a miss for strike three. A huge first out via the strikeout. That's the second K of the day for Laner. Bases still juiced, one out, and now you got to face the top of the order starting off with Jackson Reed. Who singled to start off this ball game, hitting 320 on the season with 10 RBIs. Bases loaded, one out. Here's Laner's first pitch. Breaking ball called strike at the top of the zone, and the count goes 0 1. With Yox off a of third, Gregory off a of second, Bez Tree off of first. Here's the 0 1. Breaking ball, rope to the shortstop, Brody picks it up, throws on a second for one. Curtis, turn, not in time. So the fielder's choice, they get the lead runner. One run comes across, and Rochester strikes first. The score is one nothing, almost a double play. But Reed, who's got wheels, beats it out as Yox taps on home plate. And two outs now, almost a double play. Brody bobbled it a little bit before flipping onto second base. And Curtis was coming at it from an awkward angle as well. So they're only able to get one, but they'll take it if you're Ithaca's defense. So two outs, runners on the corners, a 1-0 lead for Rochester. Colby Cruiser in the right-handed batter's box, left-handed batter's box, I should say. First pitch, fastball low and in off of the pitch is Reed, and he will swipe second base without even a look from Puglisi. So two runners in scoring position and two outs and a 1-0 count on Cruiser, who flew out to deep right center. And his last time to the plate. Here comes the 1-0. Foul ball left side of the infield. It's the third baseman, Rothstein, ranging over. Now ranges into foul ground. He can't make the play. It drops in foul territory just to the right of the foul chalk. Coming home easily is Gregory. A sky-high pop-up. It was first just started down the left field line behind the coach's box in foul ground. Rothstein, the win, battling... All the way out into right field. That ball drops. They'll give it a hit. And now runners on first and third. Two outs for Alec Ellison. First pitch fastball called strike on the outside corner. And a 2 to nothing lead for Rochester just like that. The airs, the wind all coming together against the Bombers here in the bottom of the second. With runners on the corners. Here comes the 0-1 to Ellison, wave and a miss in the fastball. So a wind-aided single, two errors in the inning, three total errors in this game for Ithaca, and the defensive struggles continue. As Laner picks over to first base with runners on the corners, takes a deep breath, now comes home with the 0-2 breaking ball. Ellison just got a piece of it. So stays alive as he fouls it off the blue backstop and the padding for about five feet before it goes up to the net and the count goes 0-2. Stays 0-2, I should say. As Laner peers over to first base. With the two outs, here's the 0-2. Fastball elevated, gets a piece of it off the backstop again. With the high cheese up towards the eyes. And Ellison, who struck out his first time to the plate, stays alive. Back-to-back -to -back two strike fastballs from Laner who sets. Another peek over to first base. Now with stare to third. With runners on the corners, here's the 0-2 again. This time it's the breaking ball. Dribble to the shortstop. Brody flips to second base where Curtis taps on the bag to retire the side, but not before. Two runs come across on two hits and two errors in the inning. Two to nothing Rochester as we head to the top of the third on Bomber Sports.
Back in the top of the third inning, two to nothing, the lead for Rochester after two runs came across in the bottom of the second on two bomber errors in addition to two hits. As Colin Feeney, the seven batter, digs in from the left side to lead it off against Nolan Sparks. First pitch breaking ball upstairs. Makes a count 1-0. Sparks has retired all six batters he's faced so far in this ball game. He's perfect through two frames with a pair of strikeouts for the Boston College commit who comes home with the 1-0. Fastball called a strike at the top of the zone to even it up on Feeney. The Bombers center fielder hitting 333 on the season with a 9-10 OPS. As Sparks, the right-hander rocks and delivers 1-1. Breaking ball just outside. The slider makes it 2-1. Feeney leading the team with a 473 on base percentage this season. He's got a patient eye at the plate. Whole lot of speed as well helps that out. Here's the 2-1. Fastball dribbled foul. Just behind home plate. And behind the catcher, Blosey, and the count goes 2-2. Two two. Rothstein has both reached base and scored a run in six straight games. Coming for the Bombers, going all the way back to the Hamilton game as the 2-2 breaking ball is roped in a right field. That's down for a base hit. Wide turnaround ba first base for Feeney as Liedem cuts it off down the, left, down the right field line, I should say. And the first hit of the day for Ithaca comes in leadoff fashion in the top of the third. And Feeney stays out at the plate. Make it seven straight games where he's reached base, and that brings up Tyler Puglisi representing the game-tying run. Bombers down 2-0 here in the top of the third as Sparks comes home. First pitch, breaking ball called strike at the top of the zone. Good speed off of first base for Feeney. He's got 11 stolen bases on 14 attempts this season. As Sparks peers in, checks over at first base. A long look to Feeney as he comes home on one fastball upstairs. And the count goes 1-1. One one. Puglisi, the Bombers, backstop today, hitting 282 with a 909 OPS. He's gotten 10 total starts this season behind the plate. Splitting time with Ethan Dadabo. 1-1 one, one pitch from Sparks. Fastball calls strike at the top of the zone. As he went with a little bit of a slide step there. Feeney with a healthy lead. Haven't even seen a pickoff attempt yet from Sparks, who gives a long look again to Feeney as he sets. Here's the pause. Here's the 1-2 to Puglisi. The breaking ball is pop foul. Down the right field line over top of the Bombers' first base dugout. And the count stays 1-2. and two. Puglisi with nine RBIs in the season. The junior transfer from the University of Albany, where he spent his first two collegiate seasons. The one two from Pugli to Puglisi, I should say. He fouled off again on the right side of the infield off the netting just on top of the Bombers on deck circle where Riley Brody awaits. Count stays one and two, and Puglisi fouling off a, tough, a couple of tough pitches to stay alive in his count. Feeney dancing off of first base with no outs. Sparks delivers the one two. Fastball just upstairs. Evens at 2-2, two and two, and he is challenging the Bombers lineup with the high heat. Mid-90s fastball. He's got the slider and the curveball as well. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Fastball in the dirt. Checked his swing. Did he go around? No, he did not. On the appeal down to the second base umpire. And... A tremendous at-bat put being put together here by Puglisi. Goes full. Sparks peers in. Gives a look over to first. Now comes home. 3-2. Runner off on the pitch. It's roped down the right field line and foul. Over top of the Bombers bullpen and out of play. So this will be the ninth pitch of the at-bat to Puglisi here. Feeney was off on the pitch. We'll see if he's off 3-2 yet again. With no outs and a runner on first base. Here's the ninth pitch of the at-bat. Runner off on the pitch, and it's roped on a hop to the shortstop in Bray Street. On to second for one. On to first in time. A beauty of a 6-4-3 double play. 
just like that, erases the leadoff single by Feeney. And two outs here in the top of the third. It was roped off the bat of Puglisi, a frozen rope just in front of Bedstreet, the shortstop. Picked it up on a hop, and right there was Reed. Quick turn and two outs as Brody steps in, takes the first pitch, fastball up and in. It goes all the way to the backstop. And the count goes one and one on the Bombers' nine hitter. Hitting 224 in the season. As the 1 0 is laced on a hop into left center field and in for a base hit. Skipping away from Benstry, who dives to try and make the play. But going to the opposite field there is the left handed Brody. And the second hit of the day for Ithaca, a two out base runner for the Bomber Blues. Both hits coming in this inning, but obviously Feeney erased by the double play. And back to the top of the order on Ethan McDonough. He struck out on four pitches in the first at-bat of the game against Sparks. He's the first pitch this time. Fastball, big wave and a miss from McDonough. Almost losing his balance, swinging out of his shoes. And the count goes 0-1. McDonough, 15 total games played, 11 starts. The majority of which have come down the stretch here in conference play for the senior. 0-1. Breaking ball called a strike at the top of the zone. And the injuries for Ithaca, Connor Peterson, Ryan Lobsher, Shishadi Rothstein earlier this season, both back in the lineup though. A lot of fresh faces have had to come in and take a chunk of playing time. McDonough has been one of those and he has capitalized on it. As the 0-2 fastball and just outside. And the count goes one and two. McDonough is very much capitalized. He's got an OPS of 1,147 with 15 RBIs in those 11 starts. 1-2 pitch, breaking ball in the dirt, checked his swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. McDonough doesn't like the call. It's the home plate umpire that calls him out. No appeal down to second base. From my angle, a little bit up the first base line, pretty much even with the base. Looked like he did indeed go around, but McDonough's not happy. Now, David Valcente is going to go talk to the home plate umpire again as well. But that will end the inning. Third strikeout of the day for Sparks. One runner stranded, two hits in the inning, and a 2 to nothing lead for Rochester as we head to the bottom of the third on Bomber Sports. Back in the bottom of the third inning, a 2 to nothing lead for the Yellow Jackets. 4-5-6, due up for Rochester. And Laner back on to work. Josh lead him in from the right side. Here comes the first pitch from the tall right-hander. It's a fastball upstairs, and the count goes 1-0. Lead him, reached on an error by the shortstop Brody his last time to the plate. With an 886 OPS in the season, as the breaking ball call strike at the bottom of the zone makes it 1-1. One and Liedem has had a stellar campaign. He leads the Liberty League with 21 stolen bases this year. And there's a 1-1 one -one foul back on the breaking ball off the netting behind zone plate to make it 1-2. And, and what's been most impressive is 14 walks to 7 strikeouts in 67 at-bats this season. He's an on-base machine. As the 1 2 pitch, breaking ball nub left side of the infield. Rothstein, the shorts, the third baseman, charges just in front of the shortstop position and makes the play coming to his left for out number one. Nice play by Rothstein over third base where he was the starter last year, but 
Brody at shortstop today. And Rothstein moving back over to third base. Makes a nice play charging it. And one out that brings up Rob Constantine. He flew out to right field his last time to the plate as the first pitch shows bunt. And it is low for ball one in the dirt as he pulls back. And the count goes one out. Constantine, a 233 hitter with six RBIs in the season in limited bats, it is the 1 0 fastball wave and a miss on the inner third, and the count goes 1 1. Constantine, 14 total games played, 11 starts for Rochester. And it's the 1 1. Breaking ball low and out to the left handed hitter, makes it 2 1. 2 to nothing the score. Rochester with two runs across in the second. Coming on two hits and two errors in the inning. Here's the 2-1 breaking ball grounded foul down the first baseline in front of the Bomber dugout. Skipping all the way to the bullpen. Both bullpens in play down the lines here at Towers Field. An all-turf surface freshly renovated last year. As the 2-2. Fastball sky high foul ground down the left field line. Rothstein gives it a look as is the left fielder Fabo that will make it into the bullpen and out of play for Rochester. So the count goes 2-2. Two two. Just this past year the bleachers behind to home plate as well as the press box was added. New fencing behind to home plate as well so very nice setup here at Towers Field. There's the 2-2 pitch from Laner. Here it is. Fastball grounded sharply down the first baseline. Again, skipping all the way into the bullpen. He's put toge putting together a tough at-bat against the Bombers' ace. And the count goes 2-2. Two and two. And I've mentioned it as well already in the broadcast, but there's going to be some big shoes to fill in the rotation for Ithaca. And here's the 2-2 two -two from Laner. Breaking ball, Nub left side of the infield. Later off the mound, makes a nice play off his left and throws on to first base for the out. Very nice play by Laner, falling off the mound on the left side and just has to pick it up with his bare hand, almost falling to the ground and flip it on to first just in time for out number two. A very nice play on the PFP. And two outs here in the bottom of the third. For Quincy Yox, he doubled and came around to score in the first. As the first pitch, breaking ball, a wave and a miss. And the count goes 0-1. Yox doubled into left center as the 1-L. He's grounded sharply left side of the infield, rostering the third baseman. Charges, picks up, throws on a first, picked out of the turf by Laney to retire the side. A 1-2-3 inning for Colin Laner in the bottom of the third. We get to the top of the fourth, 2 to nothing. Rochester leads here on Bomber Sports. Back in the top of the fourth inning, two to nothing in the lead for the University of Rochester. Two, three, four, due up in the Bombers' order, starting off with Lewis Fabo and Nolan Sparks on the mound for Rochester has been tremendous. He's only allowed two hits, only two base runners, three strikeouts. Is the first pitch to Fabo, and from the right side is a fastball upstairs, and the count goes one and zero. Fabo flew out 
to right field his last time to the plate, hitting 321 in the season in the righty righty matchup. Here's the 1 0, breaking ball upstairs. By the way, if you think you're hearing kind of banging noises in the background, because I am, you're not going crazy. I'm actually in the music building here on the University of Rochester campus, adjacent to the baseball field. And there's the 2 0 breaking ball called strike at the bottom of the zone. So just on top of the bomber dugout on the first base side is where the music building for Rochester sits. There's a stairwell just on top of the bomber dugout with a great view of the field. That's where I am. 2-1 is chopped left side of the infield, charging his best tree. The shortstop throws on to first and in time for out number one. So an interesting setup here in Rochester. You've got music going on in the background, but... Great view of Towers Field. And Sparks faces Laney in from the left side. He struck out his first time to the play in the first pitch. He sees his skied in a deep left field, taking a few steps back is Constantine. Now a couple in, a few feet in front of the warning track for out number two. Laney hits it well into the opposite field. But two outs now here in the top of the fourth, and that will bring up Matt Curtis. Curtis grounded out to third base, his first trip to the dish. Here's the first pitch to the right-handed hitter. It's a breaking ball just upstairs. And Sparks continuing to dominate this Ithaca lineup, which he's quite familiar with as the 1-0. Breaking ball grounded sharply to the third baseman. Yonks picks it up, shuffles onto first to retire the side. A bullet of a throw, and the Bombers go 1-2-3, retired in order. In the top of the fourth, we head to the bottom of the frame. 2-0 Rochester leads here on Bomber Sports. Bottom of the fourth inning from Towers Field in Rochester, New York. The University of Rochester leads Ithaca 2 to nothing. Colin Lehner back out onto work. He'll face 7-8-9 in the Rochester order, starting with Luke Gregory. In the righty-righty matchup, the first pitch from Lehner is a breaking ball upstairs, and the count goes 1-0. Two runs across in the second inning for Rochester have given us the score in an inning where there were two hits and two errors by the Bombers' defense. It's a breaking ball called strike at the bottom of the zone, evens it up 1-1. One Laner getting the start here in game one of the series, typically your Friday night guy, so to speak, for the Bombers, as the 1-1 breaking ball is popped into shallow right field. Curtis, the second baseman going out, coming in McDonough, the right fielder, and he trips but makes the play as he loses his hat. Almost got his spikes caught up with Curtis. Oh, two almost collided. And McDonough almost falling to the ground as he lost the hat there, but comes away with the baseball. And a very nice catch for McDonough, who plays a whole lot of positions primarily the infield but getting the start in right field today and one out here in the bottom of the fourth to bring up Sammy Benstree first pitch fastball upstairs out of the hand of Laner and the count goes 1-0 Benstree reached on an error back in the second and came around to score here's 1-0 it's a called strike with the fastball at the top of the zone and the count goes 1-1 one I say typically your Friday guy for Laner because it's a Saturday and he's pitching is the 1-1 fastball call strike because typically how these series go is one game Friday night and then two on Saturday, but 
Game one was pushed back due to weather as the 1 2 breaking ball grounded left side of the infield. Brody charges, weakly hit onto first just in time. Bezstreet made that play close, hustling down the line. And Brody had to charge it a little bit, took his time too, and that's the second out. Just got him. But game one was supposed to be back in Ithaca on the South Hill at Freeman Field yesterday. Instead, it's going to be tomorrow at 1 p.m. on the campus of Ithaca. As Laner's first pitch to Blosey is a fastball called strike at the top of the zone to the nine hitter who struck out swinging his last time to the plate. So the Bombers will return to campus tomorrow to round out the series as the 0-1 breaking ball foul behind to home plate. Puglisi gives it a look, but it's over top of the netting, and the count goes 0-2. With two outs, here's the 0-2 to Blosey. Breaking ball low, makes it 1-2. and two. Blosey hitting 304 this season with a 754 OPS. He's gotten a good chunk of the catching duties for Rochester. He's got a few catchers that they've rotated through on the roster. It's the 1-2 breaking ball low and away. But Blosey has, has come conference play primarily won that starting catcher job as he's been back there for a majority of the Liberty League games for Rochester. As Laner pumps home the 2-2. Fastball popped up sky high, right side of the infield foul ground for Laney, ranging towards the fence in shallow right, and that ball will make it out of play into the bleachers down the right field line, and it will stay 2-2. Two two. It's expected that Jack Picozzi will pitch in Game 2 for the Bombers. Here's the 2-2. Fastball fouled off behind home plate yet again. And Dylan Beaven will pitch game two for Rochester, who's going in game three as TBD for both sides. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball grounded sharply left side of the infield. The shortstop Brody charges, throws on a first, a bullet to Lady at first base for out number three. Back-to-back -back one, two, three innings by Laner. He's retired the last seven in order as we head to the top of the fifth inning. Two to nothing, Rochester leads here on Bomber Sports. Back in the top of the fifth inning, two to nothing the score. The University of Rochester on top over Ithaca. Nolan Sparks back on to work. Ethan Rothstein, the sixth batter in from the right side. He takes the first pitch, called strike at the top of the zone and goes 0-1 on Rothstein, who grounded out to third base his last time to the plate back in the second inning. After Sparks retired the first six batters he's faced, he's retired the last four in order as the breaking ball low and away makes it 1-1. One Sparks the Boston College commit who has had quite the resume entering his senior season at the U of R. As the 1-1 pitch, fastball wave and a miss on the low outside corner and the count goes 1-2. and two. 
He's been a starter in the rotation since his freshman year. He's second all-time at the University of Rochester in strikeouts. He's up there in opponent average, ERA, games pitched, pretty much every category you can imagine is the one-two. Breaking ball, wave and a miss in the dirt. Finishing off the strikeout is Blosey, who taps Rothstein on the back with the mitt for out number one. And the fourth strikeout of the day for Sparks. who has been stellar. He's only allowed two base runners, which both came on a pair of singles in the third. And Shishati digs in, takes the first pitch fastball, low and away to make it 1-0. It was a Feeney single. He eventually got caught with a double play, and then Brody with a single after that. He was stranded at first base. There's the 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball roped in a right field. That's down for a base hit. It's the third of the day for Ithaca. Shishati, long turn around first. He's on his way to second. Now caught in between first and second in a rundown. Back big attempt at first. Safe. Shishati with a wide turn around first base as that ball was blooped into right field almost down the line. It got cut off in the corner by Leadham. And Shishati was halfway between first and second. The throw went to second base. It got thrown to the first baseman, Ellison. Looked like it was going to be a rundown, but instead Shishati went full extension, head first dive to the back side of the first base bag, and slides in safely. Third hit of the day for Ithaca, and with one out of runner on base for Colin Feeney. And from the left side, first pitch, fastball up and in, it hit him. Skimmed the back of his jersey, and that is huge. Runners on first and second. It's the two fastest players in the Bombers order, with Feeney on first, Shishati on second base, and Tyler Puglisi coming to the plate. As Sparks sets, checks the runners, comes home first pitch. It's lifted in a deep right field down the line. Drifting towards the foul pole is Leadham. And that ball is foul. Out of play down the right field line. From my vantage point down the first base side, I can't see all the way in that corner where the ball went. So I saw Leadham drifting back. He didn't get there. And everybody will go back to their respective positions. So guess that is a foul ball. And an 0-1 count. Puglisi gave it a ride out to deep right field, though. It was all the way at second base, actually, when the ball was called foul. So he's going to get another life. Feeney isn't being held on at first, so he's got a big lead over there. Shishati with a lot of speed off second base. In and out is the second baseman, Reed. As the breaking ball in the dirt. Runners off of the pitch, and both are going to be in there standing up without a throw. I mentioned they're the two fastest players on the team. Shishati swipes third for his eighth stolen base this season. For Feeney, he gets his team leading 12th and two runners in scoring position, tying run on second for Ithaca. And a 1-1 count on Puglisi. What a time to come up big for the junior transfer. Here's the 1-1. Fastball just upstairs, and the count goes 2-1. Puglisi in a huge spot, Brody on deck, one out, runners on second and third, the two fastest players in the Bombers lineup for the eight-man Puglisi. He grounded into a double play his last time, looking to get some revenge. Here's the 2-1, breaking ball skied into deep center field, setting the center fielder Gregory back towards the warning track at the wall. He dives, can't get it, bounces off his glove, rolls all the way to the wall, scoring easily to Shishati. On his way home is Feeney. He's up without a throw. It's a stand-up two-run double for Tyler Puglisi. And the Bombers tie it up 2-2 two to two here in the top of the fifth. What a way to come up big for Puglisi. The Division I transfer from UAlbany after he grounded out into a double play in a big situation in the third comes up bigger than ever in the fifth. Shashati and Feeney both score. We're all tied up 2-2. And still a runner in scoring position, which represents the go-ahead run for Ithaca in the form of Puglisi off second base. Brody in the left-handed batter's box. Here comes the first pitch. It's foul back. And the count goes 0-1. The Bombers had only been able to squeak together three hits 
and no runs off of Nolan Sparks. And so Puglisi laced it out to deep center field. The wind kept, take, kept pushing it towards right center. Gregory dove but couldn't make the play. And here's the 0-1 to Brody. And this one skied into deep left field. Sending the left fielder Constantine back just in front of the warning track. He settles under it. And just too shallow for Puglisi to tag. So two outs after Brody gave it a ride back to the top of the order. And McDonough. So to summarize, Rothstein struck out, a single, a hit by pitch, a two-run double, the fly ball. We're all tied at two here in the top of the fifth inning, and the go-ahead run on second base in the form of Puglisi for the top hitter in the lineup, Ethan McDonough. First pitch fastball called strike on the outer third to go 0-1 with two outs. The leadoff man, McDonough, is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts, and he's had some struggles against Sparks, who's dominated with the fastball on the inside part of the zone at the top of the zone as well. A couple breaking balls in the dirt have gotten McDonough swinging as well as the 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball, wave and a miss. Got him with the sword in the dirt again. McDonough, just a big wave and a miss. And the count goes 0-2. Sparks has diced up this Bombers lineup so far. He's got four strikeouts until the Bombers finally able to break through. And Sparks... Pierce home, comes home 0-2. Breaking ball low and away. With Puglisi off the second base, not being covered by anyone, so he's got himself a big lead. Should be able to score on anything. Hit to the outfield. With the wind blowing out towards right center field as well. Here comes the 1-2 pitch. Fastball in the dirt. Kicks away a few feet from Blosey, but not far enough for Puglisi to advance. And the count goes 2-2. Two and two. It's actually starting to... It looks like light snow. Not a drizzle, but snow here at Towers Field in late April. Temperatures in the low 40s, but it doesn't look like rain. It was the 2-2 two, two fastball. Wave and a miss at the high heat. McDonough strikes out for the third time today. And... The Bombers are retired, but not before. Two runs come across in the fifth inning on the two-run double off the bat of Tyler Puglisi. All tied at two as we head to the bottom of the fifth on Bomber Sports. Back in the bottom of the fifth inning, 2-2, two two, we are all tied up between Ithaca and Rochester in a crucial game one of the most crucial series of the year to this point for Ithaca with potentially the top seed in the Western Division of the Liberty League on the line as Laner back on to work and he will face the top of the order starting with Jackson Reed in the first pitch breaking ball low. Makes it 1-0. Ithaca at 9-3 in conference play. The top seed as of right now in the Western Division. Just behind them, the Yellow Jackets is 7-2. 7-2 as the breaking ball is nub foul towards the Bombers' first base dugout. And the count goes 1-1. One one. On Reed, who's reached on a fielder's choice, also led off this ball game with his single back in the first. And a 1-1 one -one count on Reed, hitting 320 this season. He's got 10 RBIs in the year. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. 
Fastball grounded sharply left side of the infield to a couple steps to his right is Brody who picked it up on the back end, throws across the diamond and in time for route number one. So Reed retired for the first time today. And that brings up Colby Cruiser who flew out to deep right field and singled so far today against Lehner. And Cruiser has had limited at bats this season in 11 games. The first base breaking ball called strike at the bottom of the zone. Makes it 0-1, but hitting 444 with an OPS of almost 2 or 1.2, 1,200 I should say, over that span. 0-1 breaking ball, just low. Almost a 1,200 OPS in 11 games started for the Yellow Jackets. He's with one out, nobody on the 1-1. One, one. He's roped down the right field line, sending McDonough a few steps back into his right, and he's under it for out number two. So good contact by Cruiser out to right field, but McDonough playing out of position in right field, tracks it down, makes a nice play on it towards the foul pole, and two outs. And it is indeed light snow coming down here at Towers Field. He's a 2-2 as the first pitch, I should say, to Ellison is lifted deep out towards left field. Way back, way back. Bye-bye baseball. Alec Ellison with a bomb out to deep left center field to break the tie and give the Yellow Jackets a 3-2 lead here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Ellison with his third homer this season. Team leading 28th RBI. Got a fastball in the inside part of the zone and hit that way out to left center. Almost onto the street, about 40 feet beyond the fence is the first pitch to lead him is a called strike. The fourth hit of the day for U of R as the 1-0 is fouled down the left field line. Makes it 1-1. One and just like that, we are tied no longer. Rochester back in the lead after Ithaca nodded it up in the top of the frame with a two-out bomb there for Ellison. As the 0-2, I should, the 0-2 now, I should say, as the first pitch was called a strike, is looped down the right field line and foul out of play. So it'll stay 0-2. Laner looking to end this inning. With a bounce back after the two out homer from Ellison. Here's the 0 2. Breaking ball nubbed foul down the left field line towards the bullpen for Rochester. And for Laner, it's the fourth home run he's allowed this season. Is the 0 2 breaking ball just upstairs makes it 1 and 2 on Leadham who's 0 for 2 on the day, reached on an error in the first. As Laner, rocks and delivers, here's the 1-2. Breaking ball, wave and a miss for strike three. So Laner gets himself his third strikeout of the day, but not before. The solo homer by Alec Ellison, coming with two outs, gives the University of Rochester Yellow Jackets a 3-2 lead in the bottom of the fifth. We head to the top of the sixth on Bomber Sports.
Back in the top of the sixth inning, 3-2 to two the lead. University of Rochester on top after the two-out solo homer by Alec Ellison. As in from the right side is Lewis Fowler, the two-man for Ithaca, who takes a fastball just low. Four ball out of the hand of Nolan Sparks back on for his sixth inning. He's been dominant, five strikeouts, four hits allowed, two runs, which both came across in the Tyler Puglisi. Two-run double in the fifth inning is the breaking ball wave on a miss in the dirt. Makes it 1-1 one one on Fabo, who's 0-2 on the day. As Sparks peers in, gets the nod to Blosey. He now comes home with the 1-1. Fastball in the dirt. Makes it 2-1 on Fabo. Sparks with five strikeouts, three of which have come to the leadoff man, McDonough. And here's the 2-1 here to Fabo. He's a breaking ball roped in a right field, and that will be down for a base hit. Just in front of Leadham, who is ranging back a few steps towards the foul pole. And a leadoff single here in the top of the sixth for Fabo. The game-tying run on base. And the go-ahead run in the left-handed batter's box in the form of Camden Laney. That's the fifth hit of the day for Ithaca. Laney 0 for 2 with a strikeout so far in this one. First pitch, fastball low and in. Laney in the three spot today for Ithaca, playing first base. And we've talked about the injuries for Ithaca. No Ryan Lobsher as he is currently out with a leg injury, which he suffered against Vassar last Saturday at home as the 1L. Breaking ball low. Skips a step away from the catcher. Blows he off his front foot, but not far enough for Fabo to advance. Fabo's got five stolen bases in five attempts this season. But Laney, who starred in his limited at bats at the start of the season when Lobster was the starting first baseman, getting some starts down the stretch here. As he shows bunt, pulls back, it's a fastball, called a strike on the outer third, and the count goes two and one. So Laney potentially getting the bunt sign here, a guy that's hitting 417 with an OPS over 1,100. Here's the 2-1, we'll see if he drops it down. No bunt sign this, uh, this time as it's laced down the left field line. Skipping over top of the bullpen, mound down the left field line for the Yellow Jackets, out of play, it's two and two. With Curtis, the team's RBI leader on deck. Laney who's been stellar in his opportunities this spring. The sole freshman in this lineup in the lefties batter's box with a runner on first and no outs. Here's the 2-2, Fabo off on the pitch, low, throw it out of second base, not in time. Fabo slides in safely just ahead of the throw. And the count will go full on Laney with a runner in scoring position representing the tying run. Fabo gets his sixth stolen base of the year. He's still yet to be thrown out on this season. With no outs, a runner in scoring position. And the payoff pitch to Laney. Fastball up and away, ball four. So now you've got the tying and the go-ahead runners on base for the Liberty League's RBI leader in Matt Curtis. And that will make the 23rd year head coach, Joe Rena, take a stroll out to the pitching rubber. Two runs came across last inning on a single hit by pitch and a double. It was a two run double off the bat of Puglisi. We actually mentioned at the top of the broadcast that Sparks has had some command struggles over the course of his career. Today, that has not been the case aside from the hit batsman, which was Feeney, just skimmed the back of his jersey and now the walk to Laney. Those are the only two free passes he's allowed is Reyna, the 23rd year head coach, six time Liberty League coach of the year. Comes back off the mound. The mound meeting dissipates. And Curtis into the right-handed batter's box. With Laney off of first, Fabo off of second. The Bombers down by one. Curtis, the conference leader in RBIs. The first pitch fastball called a strike at the top of the zone. 31 runs batted in on the season. One homer for Curtis. The sophomore has been lethal at the plate this year and looks to come up big in the most crucial conference game of this season so far for the Bombers.
Here's the 0-1. Breaking ball called a strike at the top of the zone. Borderline pitch goes in favor of Sparks, who drops in the curveball. And the count goes 0-2. Good speed off second for Fabo, with Laney trailing at first. Here's the 0-2. Fastball rope foul down the right field line and out of play. And Sparks challenging Curtis with the fastball just at the top of the zone. And Curtis evidently laid on 95 miles per hour out of the hand of Sparks. And it stays one and two. Here it is. Breaking ball. Nub left side of the infield. Could be two. Yock steps on the third base bag. That's all he can get, though. Laney got a good jump. So Yox looked at second base to try and get the double play, but instead you saw Fabo in front of him decided to get the lead runner. Would have been a close play at second. And Curtis has solid speed. So not the worst case scenario at all there because that's obviously a double play. You still got the tying run and go-ahead run on the base pads. Curtis off of first on the fielder's choice. And Laney off a second. You also get the quickest runner off the bases, though, if you're Rochester in the form of Fabo. And that brings up Ethan Rothstein. The team's average leader this season, 354. First pitch to Rothstein. Fastball wave and a miss. And the count goes 0-1. Rothstein has a homer in 16 RBIs. The so long ball of the year for Rothstein came against Elmira in an out-of-conference midweek game. As Sparks with Curtis off of first, Lady off second, rocks home with the 0-1, and a breaking ball wave and a miss for strike two. After Puglisi came up big last inning, the solo homer in the bottom of the frame by Ellison. And now the Bombers looking to battle back. 0-2, breaking ball fouled off behind so in play. It was a curveball at the top of the zone, gets a piece of the netting. As snow continuing to lightly come down here at Towers Field. With sharp wind out towards right center field. The tying and go-ahead runners on base for Ithaca is the 0-2 with one outbreaking ball is laced in the left field. That's down for a base hit. Now getting the late stop sign is Laney as it's a bullet to the cutoff man from the left fielder Constantine. A clutch single by Rothstein for his first hit of the day. Sixth for the Bombers. The bases are loaded with one out for Collins to Shaddy. The fact that it was hit so hard in combination with this synthetic turf at Towers Field makes that ball almost impossible to give Laney the wave on because of how sharply it was hit. And the right call by Valdecente is Shaddy in from the right side with the bases juice. First pitch breaking ball, checked his swing, went around, goes 0-1. The bases juice for Colin Shaddy. Big chance here for the captain, the senior, to come up big. He's already got a single off Sparks in the day. 0-1. Fastball outside. Evens it up 1-1. One and, one. and what a spot this is. Rothstein off of first. Curtis off of second. Laney off of third. Bombers down by one. With one out here in the top of the sixth. There's Sparks sets. At the belt, now he delivers the 1-1 breaking ball. Check swing. Yes, Shishadi did go around, and the count goes 1-2. What a spot it would be for Shishadi. 16 RBIs in the season. He's had some rough patches on the year. He's coming off an injury, and what a spot this would be. 1-2. Breaking ball. Got a piece of it to foul it off. Looks like it got the body of Blosey. Who tosses it back to Sparks. Shishadi stays alive, fouling off a nice curveball in the zone. One and two. A guy that's come up clutch so many times in his career on the South Hill. A couple of clutch plays, including a walk-off hit last year. Clutch in the postseason. Clutch in the NCAA tournament. Can he be clutch now? Here's the one-two. Breaking ball nub foul on the third base side off the facing of the Rochester dugout. And it stays one and two. Strong battle being put together by Shishadi. 
Feeney on deck. He's reached base twice today. Base is loaded. Three to two the score. Bombers down by one. Here's the one-two to Shashati. Fastball waving a miss for strike three. Sparks goes with the high heat. Shashati waves under it. Two outs. And the sixth strikeout of the day for Sparks. Here comes Colin Feeney from the left side. Feeney hit by a pitch. A single came around to score in the fifth. There's the first pitch fouled off the netty behind to him. Plate and goes 0-1. The Bombers looking to come up clutch here and not strand the bases loaded. Not going to get a better chance than this. Down by one are the Bombers here on the top of the sixth. Feeney with a homer and 12 RBIs in this season. Here's the 0-1. Fastball high, almost... Goes to the backstop, but blows the catcher. Leaps up as high as he can go, like he's getting ready for a vertical at the NFL Combine to snag that ball from going all the way to the backstop and potentially run to score, but a very shallow backstop here at Towers Field. So Laney at third would have to get a tremendous jump. And here's the 1-1 pitch. Breaking ball in the dirt, smothered by blows. He keeps it in front a couple feet up the third baseline where he goes and gets it. Staring down Laney at third base. It goes two and one. A prime scoring chance for the Ithaca Bombers. Not going to get any better with Rothstein off of first. Curtis off second. Laney off third. Two on the count. Two outs. Bases loaded. Bombers down by one. Here's the pitch. Fastball fouled off towards the netting behind to him plate. And it goes two and two. Sparks is one pitch away from getting out of it. A pair of singles and a walk in the inning. As Sparks looks in, gives the nod, two outs, bases loaded, 2-2 two -two pitch, fastball low and in, ball three. The count full on Feeney, and what a pitch this is. Runners are going to have a head start. Bases juiced. Two outs, bombers down by one. Sparks. The 3-2 pitch to Feeney, roped into center field, ranging it as the center fielder Gregory, he'll make the play on the run, now bounces off his glove, one run home, two runs home, getting the wave Rothstein, he scores, Gregory couldn't come up with it in center field, three runs come across for the Bombers, on what will go as an E8, in all likelihood, off the bat of Feeney. Laney, Curtis, Rothstein score, and the Bombers take a 6-3 lead. A 5-3 lead, I should say, here on the top of the sixth. And Feeney on second base. Gregory in center field just booted it. It was a line drive into left center. He had to take a few steps back into his right. Couldn't make the play. Looked like he had it tr tracked easy. But just bounced right off of his glove. And the Bombers with a 5-2 to two lead. And tip of the cap to Feeney, who saw a fastball, just roped it up the middle. And a line drive made for a tough play. Now Tyler Puglisi looking to add some more. He had the clutch two-run double. Which... Initially tied the ball game up as the breaking ball waving a miss by Puglisi. And the count goes 0-1. And, and Sparks peers in. Comes set. With feet off second, fires home the 0-1. Fastball called strike on the outside corner. Three runs across in the inning on the air by Gregory, and the Bombers with a two-run lead just like that. It's a game of defense, and it's been evident so far in this ballgame. Feeney off of the pitch, 0-2, breaking ball low and away, and in the dirt blows, he scoops it, but Feeney 90 feet away down. And for Feeney, who already had a stolen base today, that's his second of the game and team leading 13th of the season. 
as Spark sets. With two outs and a runner on third base, here's the one two. Breaking ball, nub foul. And the dirt dish behind to home plate. One and two, the count. On Puglisi, hitting 282 on the season overall. Looking to come up clutch yet again. Here's the one two. Fastball grounded, up the middle for a base hit. Squeaking through the infield just over the second base bag. Feeney scores from third. Tyler Puglisi comes up big yet again. And the Bombers make it a 6-3 lead. A four spot on the top of the sixth. Puglisi with his second RBI hit of the day. He's now got three RBIs on the day. And the wheels coming off for Rochester. It's the seventh hit for Ithaca. Off of Sparks, who was perfect through three frames. Two and a half, I should say. And he's the first pitch, fastball low and away to, low and away to Riley Brody, who has a single, also roped a ball down the right field line that was caught by Leadham back in the third. And there's the 1L. Breaking ball, called strike at the top of the zone, evens it up 1-1. One, one. Four runs across in the inning for the Bombers. And Puglisi is still off of first base. As Sparks rocks and delivers. 1-1 one, one breaking ball. Sky high to shallow center. Gregory ranging in. He's under this one and makes the play to retire the side, but not before. Four runs come across in the inning. Three hits, one runner left on base. It's the Puglisi RBI single, as well as the E8, which allowed three runs to score, which put the Bombers on top. Six to three as we head to the bottom of the sixth on Bomber Sports. Back in the bottom of the sixth inning, a 6-3 to three lead for Ithaca. After a four spot on the top of the frame, Colin Lehner back on to work. He'll face 5-6-7, starting with Rob Constantine. As the righty rocks and fires, first pitch to the left-handed hitter is a fastball low and out. If you're just joining this, this, this has been a pretty wild ball game. It started with three errors early on for Ithaca, which allowed two runs to score in the second inning. Rochester out to a 2-0 lead. It is the 1-0 a fastball up and away to Constantine makes it 2-0. It was a 2-0 lead for the U of R until the fifth inning when a Tyler Puglisi two-run double tied us up. Then an Alec Ellison solo homer for Rochester in the bottom of the frame gave Rochester a 3-2 lead as the 2-0 is an off-speed just low, makes it 3-0. And then Ithaca got back with a four spot in the top of this frame. Here's the 3-0 pitch, a fastball right down Broadway for a called strike. Laner gets one back, it goes 3-1. The first three of those runs came on a line drive to center field. It looked like a ball that was going to end the inning. Sparks was going to get out of it, straight in the bases loaded. And here's the 3-1 fastball, Josh low and away for ball four. That's the first walk allowed today by Laner. It comes to the five-hitter Constantine to lead off the sixth inning. Looked like Sparks was going to get out of the inning scot-free. But instead, on the shallow fly ball to Gregory, just dropped it. In shallow center, three runs came around to score. 
as the first pitch is a breaking ball called strike on the inside corner to Quincy Yox. The error allowed three runs to score. Then Feeney would come around to score on the Puglisi single. Bombers with a 6-3 lead. This game has had almost everything it feels like so far. Here's Laner 0-1. Breaking ball in the dirt. Blocked by Puglisi. Back pick attempted first base. Close play. Did he get him? No, he did not. Laney, Laner, excuse me, Laney. Keep confusing him. You got Laner on the mound. Laney at first base. Laney, the first baseman, applied the tag. But just back in time was Constantine. A nice back pick attempt from Puglisi, who we've seen all season long is not afraid to let it rip from behind his own plate. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball called a strike at the bottom of the zone. Makes it 1-2 and two on Yox, who doubled and scored back in the second. And this game has been straight, I guess you can say, by errors. Three runs coming across. All four runs against Sparks have been unearned. Thanks to the air by Gregory. As the 1 2 pitch, fastball grounded, third base. Rothstein looks at second, throws for one onto first, not in time. Just ahead of the throw, Yox. So he reaches on the fielder's choice and one out here in the bottom of the sixth. His action up down the left field line in the Rochester bullpen. But errors have riddled this game as the first two runs coming across against Laner were unearned. And then the last four against Sparks, unearned as well. And here's the first pitch to the right-handed hitting Gregory, looking for some revenge. He's blasted way out to deep left field, sending Fabo back towards the warning track at the wall. He looks up, bye-bye baseball. Lou Gregory gets himself some revenge after dropping the fly ball in shallow center field, which allowed four, three runs to score, four in the inning, and allowed the Bombers to take the lead. Luke Gregory with the long ball to left center to put the U of R within one. Six to five now the score. Storybook for Gregory. After he dropped the routine fly ball as the first pitch fouled on the first base side and out of play by Bestry, he dropped the routine ball in shallow center allowed the pace of this game, the story, everything of this game, to go right back in favor of the Bombers as the 1-0 pitch breaking ball low. Now he brings the momentum in favor of Rochester with the two-run bomb. Yach scores his second run of the game. It's the first home run of the season for Gregory. What a time. There's the 1-1, a wave and a miss. And this has been a wild ball game so far. Couldn't have scripted it any better. It's six to five. Bombers still on top in the bottom of the sixth. As the one two to Ben Street is roped on a line to the second baseman, Curtis, who picks it up now on a hop and throws on a first base for out number two. And straight out of the script for Gregory. Still a lot of ball game left, but. Within one with the moon shot out to left field is the first pitch he called strike on the inside corner to Luke Blosey, who is 0 for 2 doing the catching today for Rochester is the 0-1. Fastball fouled off the netting behind to home plate. And it goes 0-2. It's the second home run allowed today by later in back-to-back -back innings. First it was Ellison with the solo shot in the fifth. And the two-run blast by Gregory. As the 0-2 grounded up the middle, Brody ranging to his left, glove side, throw on to first base with a nice play on the roller to retire the side, but not before two runs come across for the U of R on the two-run missile off the bat of Luke Gregory. 6-5, to five. Bombers still lead, looking some, for some insurance as we head to the top of the seventh on Bomber Sports.
Back in the top of the seventh inning, Ethan McDonough in the top of the order up for Ithaca against a new pitcher on the mound, Magnus Siverston. The top arm out of the bullpen for Rochester comes in, and a first pitch breaking ball low to McDonough, makes it 1-0. Bombers leadoff man went 0-3 for 3 with three strikeouts against the University of Rochester ace Nolan Sparks as the 1-0 breaking ball checks his swing. It's a blooper right back to the pitcher in Silverstein who throws on a first on the PFP for out number one. So Nolan Sparks' day is done. He goes six innings, allowing six runs on seven hits with six strikeouts, but only two of those runs were earned as the final four, all of which came in the sixth inning, were unearned after the error by the center fielder Luke Gregory. Six to five, the score. Bombers on top by one as the first pitch called strike on the inside corner to Lewis Fabo. Makes it 0-1. Still action down the left field line. A lefty up and throwing the Rochester pin. He's a breaking ball line foul down the left field line. Right back over towards that U of R bullpen. In what has been a wild game so far. And it's now a one-run ball game because of the man that made the error that allowed three runs on the play and then four in the inning to come across. As the 0-2, breaking ball looped in a shallow center. Here's Gregory ranging in under it and makes the play for out number two. Feeney Fabo, I should say, retired. But Gregory had a crucial error in center field, allowed four runs to score last inning, then comes up with a runner on first base in the bottom of the frame and hits a missile for a two-run homer to left field to make this a one-run game. Couldn't script it any better. Here's the first pitch to Camden Laney, called strike at the top of the zone. Silverson, a 2.20 ERA, one and two in the season, is a breaking ball low. Makes it one and one. Magnus Silverson, the. Stocky right-hander, six foot one, one eighty-five from Northfield, Illinois, and the senior for the U of R. Here's the one-one fastball just outside, makes it two and one on Laney. Five thirty career ERA in thirty-seven and third innings of work throughout his Yellow Jackets career. Is the breaking ball called strike at the bottom of the zone? To Laney makes it one and two. With two outs here in the top of the seventh inning, six to five. The lead for the Bombers looking to add some insurance. Is the 1 2 wave and a miss on the elevated fastball for strike three? A 1 2 3 inning in relief for Silverton as we head to the bottom of the seventh, 6 to 5 at the Leeds on Bomber Sports.
Colin Laner's day is done on the mound for Ithaca, six to five. Bombers lead here in the bottom of the seventh. The southpaw, Sean Kelly from Hempstead, New York, takes over as he'll face the top of the order, starting with Jackson Reed. Here comes the first pitch from the lefty. It's fouled off down the right field line and out of play over top of the bomber dugout on the first base side. Kelly, the senior lefty at 6'2", 170. He's had a strong season so far out of the bomber pen as the 0-1 to Reed is roped on hop to the right to on the right side. And Curtis, the second baseman, can't come up with it. Skips off of his glove on a hot shot off the bat of Reed. And we'll see how that goes in the book. Looks like it will go as a single as it was a hot shot. Tough play for Curtis, who's not naturally even a second baseman. And a leadoff single for Reed, who's now two for four on the day. A 4.26 ERA in 19 innings. 12 strikeouts this season for Kelly as Cruiser in from the left side. He shows Bunn, drops it down, fouled up, down the left field side. Judged up the third base line, and the count goes 0 1. And the day is done for Laner. He goes six innings, strong start. Here's the 0 1 showing Bunt again this time as Cruiser pulls back from the breaking ball in the dirt. It goes 1 1. Six innings, five runs, five hits, but only three of those runs were earned on the ledger of Laner. All coming off the pair of homers as a pickoff attempt over at first. And back in with a head first dive is Jackson Reed, who's got wheels in the base pads. Reed with nine stolen bases on 11 attempts this year. Ranking top 10 in the Liberty League in bags is the 1-1 breaking ball showing bunt again is Cruiser. Pulls back on the slider outside. And the count goes 2-1. and one. Cruiser 1-3 one for three on the day with a single and a pair of fly balls to right field as the 2-1 shows bunt. This time drops it down right back to Kelly. Looks 2, throws 1, and will get Cruiser who does the job of moving the runner over. One out here in the bottom of the seventh. And the game-tying run on second base for the Yellow Jackets in the form of a whole lot of speed in Reed as Tyler Puglisi, the catcher, is going to take the trip out to the mound to talk things over with Kelly. And you're going to face Alec Ellison, who had the solo homer in the fifth inning, a moonshot off of Laner. Quick mound visit. There's Puglisi back behind the plate. Ellison one for three, including his third home run of the season. As Kelly peers over to second, here's the first pitch. It's a fastball called strike on the low outside corner. Kelly didn't pitch a ton over his first three years on campus. Only 10 total games and not even 10 innings for Ithaca. As the 0-1 wave and a miss on the fastball on the outer third, but this season he's come in a big time role as a reliever. He's three and one. And as I mentioned, a 4-2-6 ERA over 19 innings of work. And it's a long look to second. Another peer. Here's the 0-2 with one out. And it's pop foul down the right field line and out of play. Giving it a look is McDonough, but far into the stance. And the count stays 0-2. Ellison, who has had a breakout campaign this year. He's top five in hits, RBIs, average, slugging, OPS, and doubles in the Liberty League if you need any more. 0-2, right off on the pitch. is rounded, left side of the infield. Charging Brody, throws on a first. Laney picks it out of the dirt. A great play by Laney to preserve the out. Reed moves up to third base. Would have been safe for the stolen base regardless. And now two outs for the cleanup man, Josh Leadham. Nice play charging the ball by Brody on the weak chopper and an even better play by Laney over at first base to scoop that ball. So two outs for Leadham. He's 0 for 3 on the day, reached on an error. Here comes the first pitch, breaking ball low with the game-tying run 90 feet away. Bombers on top, 6-5 here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Sean Kelly looking to get out of the inning and escape that leadoff single from Reed, who also stole a base. Here's the 1-0. Fastball outside. It goes 2-0. Kelly has had some command struggles, allowing five walks so far this season to 12 strikeouts. Here's the 
Fastball in the dirt. Gets a couple steps away from Puglisi. Runner off of the pitch. Here's the throw. It's Aaron. Up the third baseline as Kelly was covering. Puglisi just lost it. Went a few feet behind him. He bobbled it. Tried to, at the last second, just fling it over to Kelly. But it was a bad throw up the third baseline. Probably safe either way as Redu got a great jump. And we're all tied 6-6. This game has been as crazy, as close, as good of a ball game as you could expect. Here's the 3-0 fastball right down Broadway for a called strike. The passed ball from Puglisi allows Reed to score 6-6. Six to six. The score here in the bottom of the seventh is the fastball low and in. Almost missed the back foot of Leadham, and he works a two-out walk. So the go-ahead run now on base for Rochester. This has been craziness, and aside from the two RBI hits from Puglisi and the two homers from the Rochester side, every run has come across in relatively insane manners. Is off on the pitch is Liedem. First pitch to Constantine, goes all the way to the backstop. Oh, the fastball just a bit outside. Puglisi couldn't snag it. And another stolen base for Leadham. His second of the day. And his 22nd of the season. Go ahead, run in scoring position. 1 0 in the lefty lefty matchup. Fastball upstairs to Constantine makes it 2 0. Mention the command issues for Kelly. In his career, he's got 25 walks in 28 and two thirds innings of work entering today. The command is huge. Got to harness it here. Here's the 2-0. Fastball low. Ball three. A 3-0 count. And Tyler Puglisi just takes a step towards the rubber and motions towards Kelly saying, calm down. Take a deep breath. It's exactly what Kelly does. A deep breath on the mound. Shrugs his shoulders as he comes set. Takes a peek over to second base. Steps off the mound. And... A little pump fake over to second base, not even a throw. Looking over at Leadham before a big 3-0 pitch here to Constantine. 0 for 2 on the day with a walk. Here's the 3-0. Fastball in there for a called strike at the bottom of the zone, and it goes 3-1. and one. Kelly looking to strand Leadham, who's got the most speed on this Rochester team on second base. Pickoff attempt. Runner off of the pitch. It goes to second. Throw to third. Safe. Underneath the tag is Leadham. Gets the stolen base off Kelly. He was off. Kelly threw to second base in the pickoff attempt. Brody threw to third. And the speed of Leadham has his second stolen base consecutively. Go ahead run. 90 feet away. A 3-1 count. Two outs. Fastballs rope down the right field line. Foul. Makes it out of play over the fencing. And everyone here at Towers feel on the edge of their seats. Big payoff pitch. With Leadham off of third base. We're all tied at six. He's the go-ahead run for Rochester here in the bottom of the seventh. With two outs, the payoff pitch to Constantine. Wave and a miss for strike three. Kelly gets out of it with a huge strikeout, but not before one run comes in in the inning to tie us up 6-6 six, six on the pass ball. This game... Could it get any crazier? We shall see when we come back at the top of the eighth here on Bomber Sports.
Back in the top of the eighth inning, we are all tied 6-6 from Rochester. After one run comes across in the pass ball in the seventh inning on the U of R side. And Matt Curtis, the cleanup man, will lead it off for Ithaca. Magnus Silverson back out onto the mound. And a first pitch breaking ball called a strike at the bottom of the zone. Silverson in the righty-righty matchup. He's been stellar in relief. After a perfect inning, last frame is the 0-1 breaking ball. Big wave and a miss for Curtis. And the count goes 0-2. Silvetson dominant so far this season in relief for U of R as he gives a couple of shakes. Now the nod to Blosey as the breaking ball in the dirt makes it one and two on Curtis, the Liberty League leader in runs batted in with 31 in the season. He reached on a fielder's choice his last time at the plate and came around to score. One, two to Curtis. Breaking ball grounded foul. Past the third base coach's box now to play towards the bullpen where there's double barrel action down the left field line in the Rochester bullpen. One, two. Breaking ball chopped foul off the facing of the third base dugout belonging to the Yellow Jackets, and the count stays one and two. This game has been crazy. Six to six, we've seen a pair of homers. We've seen a ton of unearned, run on, unearned runs on some wild errors. Stolen bases galore. Pickoff attempts galore. There's a 1-2 fastball upstairs. Four total errors in this game. And there have been, let's see, four, five, six unearned runs of the 12 total runs in this game. There's a breaking ball fouled on the third base side yet again off of the front far side of the Rochester dugout. And the count goes, stays, I should say, two and two on Curtis. Looking for his first hit of the day. Seven total hits for Ithaca. And it's a two two, breaking ball inside. And the count goes three two. Six to six, seven hits for Ithaca, six for U of R. And it's a three two, breaking ball is laced foul down the left field line towards the bullpen again. Three errors for Ithaca which allowed two runs to score, or a pair of which, I should say, allowed two runs to score in the second for Rochester to get the scoring started. And the Bombers battling back on the offensive side, highlighted by Tyler Puglisi, who's got himself a two-hit, three-RBI day. As the 3-2 to Curtis, breaking ball inside for ball four. And exactly what you need for Ithaca is base runners and good at bats. And that's exactly what Curtis does there. And Mention it, double barrel action down the left field line of the Rochester bullpen. There's a lefty and a righty currently up and throwing. Silverton has, hasn't thrown a ton of length this season in relief for Rochester. As Ethan Rothstein in from the right side. Here's the first pitch. Breaking ball is shot sky high to shallow center. Gregory takes a step in. Now a couple steps out with the wind blowing out towards right center field. And he tracks it down for out number one. That'll bring up Colin Shishati. He's one for three on the day, singled and scored back in the fifth inning for Ithaca. Silvetson with a long pier over to first base at Curtis as he sets. And the first pitch is a called strike to Shishati. He checked his swing, probably went around, but it doesn't matter as it's a called strike. Shishati, a 282 hitter on the season after he led the Liberty League in batting average last year, pick over attempt, pick off attempt, I should say, and a throw to first base. But Curtis back in with a head first dive, count 0 and 1 on Shishati. But a strong year this year is the 0 1 breaking ball off the back, right between the 1 and the 4 on the back of Shishati's uniform. Second hit batter, hit Ithaca batsman of the day. And runners on first and second with one out for Colin Feeney. Feeney's reached base three times today. He singled, was hit by a pitch, and then lined the ball in the center field that Gregory missed and allowed three runs to come across. And the Bombers to take the lead at the time of 5-2 to two lead. And he's the first pitch to Feeney low and away. 5-3 to three lead, I should say. Silvetson sets at the belt. Look over to second. Look over to first. 
in a tie ball game, the 1 0 dribbled foul. Just towards the backstop. It looks like it got the front foot first of Feeney, so he'll take a second to make his rounds around the batter's box area. Looks like it did get him on the front foot first. Stretching it out, taking a couple of practice swings before he digs back in from the left side. With Shishati off of first, who's got wheels, and Curtis off of second. A 1-1 count with one out in a tie ball game in the top of the eighth. All knotted up at six. Silvetson sets. Fires home the 1-1, and this is roped in a right field down for a base hit. Curtis getting the wave. Now the late stop sign at third is a perfect relay throw from right field by Leadham on the money to the cutoff man Ellis in the first baseman. Curtis would have been dead to rights. So a good stop sign at third base by Valicente. Another clutch hit for Colin Feeney. Bases loaded. One out for Ithaca. Tyler Puglisi, the man that has the two clutch RBI hits on the day. He's got three RBIs for Ithaca. Will come to the plate and he will face a new pitcher. Bases loaded. One out. Tyler Puglisi to the batter's box in a tie ball game when we come back on Bomber Sports. This ball game has been wild so far and in another wild spot of the Ithaca Bombers. Base is loaded. One outs for Tyler Puglisi, who's two for three with three RBIs on the day and a new pitcher on the mound. Sammy Rosenfeld, the right-hander, takes the ball with the bases loaded. Feeney off of first, Shishati off of second, and Curtis off of third. Puglisi into the right-handed batter's box. Rosenfeld, the junior pitcher, 6'6", 240 from North Grafton, Massachusetts. He's got a 4.87 ERA. He's 2-0 in seven appearances out of the bullpen this season. Tyler Puglisi, the Division I transfer from UAlbany in the right-handed batter's box. Here's the first pitch. Wave and a miss at the breaking ball in the dirt. The count goes 0-1. Great speed off of first and second base for Ithaca with Feeney, the team leader in stolen bases off of first. The guy that's second on the team in stolen bases off of second in Shishati. All tied at six here in the top of the eighth. Here's the 0-1. Breaking ball low and away. Evens it at one and one. 20 in the third innings. Pitched 26 strikeouts. Some command struggles, though, for Rosenfield this season with 18 walks in those 20 in the third innings. Here's the 1-1 pitch with one out and the bases juiced. Called strike on the outside corner with the fastball out of the hand of Rosenfield after Magnus Silvetson goes one and a third Allowing no runs, one hit, but he's responsible for everybody on base. It is the 1-2 is chopped foul towards the third base coach's box. 
Picked up by David Valicente. And a 1-2 count on Puglisi. Middle infield for Rochester. Shifted, hoping for a double play. And Ithaca looking to break out the bats. All tied at six. Bases loaded. 1-2 pitch. Foul down the right field line. And out of play. Puglisi's put together a strong couple of at-bats. He grounded into a double play in a clutch situation in the third inning. And he's already gotten his redemption with a two-run double in the fifth and an RBI single in the sixth. He's accounted for three of the six bomber runs on the day. Here's the one-two pitch. Fastball low and away, lays off, and it goes two and two. Rosenfield has been a big piece out of the bullpen for Rochester over the past three seasons. A career 7-1 and one record and 6.50 ERA. And here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Fastball check swing. Did he go around? Yes, he did. Went with the high heat, the fastball at the eyes. And a sword by Puglisi on the check swing. He goes around and two outs for Riley Brawny, the nine hitter in the Bombers order. As Rosenfield looks to get out of the jam, bases loaded, two outs. Here's the first pitch to Brawny. Fastball just inside. Brody one for three on the day with a single in the third. Punished the ball out to deep right field in the fifth. That was tracked down by Leadham just in front of the warning track. And there's the 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball called strike at the bottom of the zone. Evens it up at one. With the bases juiced here in the top of the eighth, eighth inning for Ithaca in a ball game all tied at six. In a crucial Liberty League game, crucial series, here's the 1-1 pitch. Breaking ball, grounded sharply, down the right field line. Diving play by the first baseman, Ellison. To his right, dives on top of the foul line. Steps on the first base bag. Saving the go-ahead runs for Ithaca. Saving extra bases. What a play by Alec Ellison. And the side is retired. 6-6, six to six, we're all tied. Heading to the bottom of the eighth on Bomber Sports. Well, this has been one of the most exciting slash wild baseball games I've ever seen. It's all tied 6-6 here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And a new pitcher for Ithaca. It's Connor Burns looking to lock it down. And he will face 6-7-8 starting with Quincy Yox in the Rochester order. Yox one for three with a pair of runs scored and a double on the day. First pitch fouled into the first base dugout of Rochester. A line drive. Everybody runs out of the way. Looks like didn't hit anybody. Starting to drizzle here at Towers Field in Rochester. A little bit of a sun shower. As bright blue skies down the left field line. Not over top of us right now. As the fastball upstairs makes it one and one. Wild game. I mean, I don't even know where to start. But where I should start is by one of the best plays that you will see. By the first baseman, Alec Ellison, going full extension down the first base line. With two outs and the bases loaded. Is the 1-1 pitch dub foul behind to home plate. 
A sharp ground ball by Brody that would have been extra bases and would have given the Bombers the lead. It tied 6-6 in the bottom of the ninth, in the top of the eighth, I should say. But a great play by Ellison, going full extension and stepping on the bag. Here's the breaking ball in the dirt. Swing and a miss by Yox. Puglisi blocks it, throws on a first base. Laney steps on the bag to complete this strikeout. And Burns strikes out the first batter he faces here in the bottom of the ninth after Kelly with a strong first inning and sole inning of relief with one strikeout. Does allow a run on the pass ball. But Burns comes in, and Burns has been excellent this season. His first as a pitcher, 3.68 ERA, 22 innings, 17 strikeouts. As Burns' first pitch to Gregory is roped in a right field and through for a base hit. Through the right side of the infield after Gregory, who dropped that ball in center field, which gave the Bombers the lead at the time. On the E8 in center, just a routine fly ball that he dropped, allowed three runs to score, the inning to extend, and change this game completely. Now he's got himself two hits after another piece of what's been a crazy part of this game is the fact that it was Gregory who had a two-run moonshot out to left field directly following his error. As the fastball low and away makes it 1-0 and on Semi Bestry, who was 0-3 on the day, reached on an error back in the second. I mean, it's storybook. The guy who makes the game-changing error, it's the game-changing two-run homer. That's exactly what happened. Fastball nubbed foul on the left side towards the third base coach's box. Drizzle has stopped here at Towers Field. Sun starting to peek out over somewhat cloudy skies, some blue beyond center field and left center field. Wind is still blowing out towards right center. Here in Rochester, all side 6 6 is a pickoff attempt over at first base. Gregory back with a head first dive. And good speed on the base paths as well for Gregory. Two for two on stolen base attempts this year. As Burns, another pickoff attempt, another close play. Head first dive for Gregory. Tag applied by Laney. Bez Tree, a 278 hitter with a pair of homers entering today for the freshman. One of the two freshmen in the lineup. As the 1-1 is roped out to deep left field, giving Chase Fabo out towards left center, raging back towards the warning track at the wall. He leaps. Bye-bye baseball. It's a two-run homer for Sammy Bestree. And Rochester takes an 8-6 lead here in the bottom of the eighth. The craziness of this game continues. Back and forth, the punches exchanged between the Bombers and the Yellow Jackets. And the Yellow Jackets eight hitter delivers a blow with the ref with the right hook. The two run missile, eight to six to score. Oh my goodness. Sammy Benstreet digs in from the right side, takes the first pitch breaking ball in there for a called strike. The two run homer, eight to six. Now the score as the 0 1 a breaking ball low. Man, Benstreet's third homer this season. This game. The craziness just continues. Third homer of the day for Rochester. Both sides with eight hits on the game. Luke Blosey in the right-handed batter's box. He's 0 for 3, a 1-1 count with one out. Craziness in Rochester. 1-1, bloop left side of the infield. Charging Rothstein off balance throw as he charges it into his left for out number two. This has been one of the most wild, one of the most exciting baseball games I have ever seen. And as of right now, Rochester with the advantage. The hits haven't come often for Rochester, but they've been clutch. Showing bunt pulling back on a breaking ball. It's called a strike at the bottom of the zone. It is Jackson Reed, he's two for four in the day. Singled and came around to score on the pass ball. Stole a base. Stole, actually, I should say, two bases as well in the seventh. As the 0-1 is chopped left side of the infield. Brody charges. Throws on a first just in time to retire the side, but not before the two-run bomb from Sammy Benstreet. Gives Rochester an 8-6 lead as we head to the top of the ninth. Bombers need two to tie. Three to make it their favor in the top of the ninth on Bomber Sports.
We return in the top of the ninth inning after the two-run homer from Sammy Bestry for Rochester. The Yellow Jackets with an 8-6 lead and looking to shut it down here facing the top of the order. Looks like we're going to see a fresh pitcher on the mound for Rochester. And the fresh pitcher is also the guy that started this game in right field, Josh Leadham. As a wave and a miss by McDonough, the leadoff man makes it 0-2. Leadham is not only the right fielder for this Yellow Jackets team, he's also quite often the closer. As the 0-2 to McDonough, breaking ball called strike three on the outside corner. McDonough down on strikes for the fourth time today. And one out here in the top of the ninth. Two outs away from victory. As Leadham, the right-hander from Barrington, Rhode Island kicks and deals first pitch to Fabo grounded sharply in the six hole backhand best three out to first not in time great play sliding with the backhand and the snare the snag but not in time as Fabo with speed hustling down the line and infield single brings the game tying run to the batter's box in the form of the three hitter Camden Laney for late in this season two appearances two innings has yet to allow a run with two strikeouts. As he sets and delivers, first pitch to Laney, fastball inside. Laney today has reached base once via the walk, came around to score in the sixth. Aside from that, he's 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. As the 1 0, breaking ball upstairs. And Laney has been so clutch this season. In his freshman campaign, he's the, the sole starter who's a freshman in his bomber lineup. And a big chance here to extend this ball game. Pinch towards the middle is the middle infield is the 2-0 fastball upstairs. And Laney was actually showing bunt there, but pulls back at the last minute. A seven-game hit streak for Laney on the line as well here. Dating back to the April 7th game against RIT. 3-0 fastball right down Broadway for a called strike. And it goes 3-1. Bombers down to their final pair of outs. 6-8 to eight the score. Rochester on top here in the top of the ninth. And Leadham looking to lock it down. Here's the 3-1. Fastball lifted foul down the left field line. Now to play onto the football field that runs parallel down the left field line. The... It was actually just a lacrosse game on that field that rounded out as well. There's a big payoff pitch coming. Liam looks in, gives the nod. Runner on first. One out. 3-2 pitch. Fastball up and away for ball four. And the go-ahead run comes to the batter's box. The tying run is on base for Ithaca. And who steps to the plate? It's Matt Curtis. He's the Liberty League leader in RBIs with 31. He's reached base on a fielder's choice in a walk today. Righty righty matchup. David Valicente in the third base coach's box calling out sides to his offense. Looks like we're going to have a pinch runner. That's, that's what all the fuss is about. And the pinch runner will be Colin Dunn. He's got a couple of stolen bases. He's come into a lot of games as a pinch runner. He's got eight runs scored in the year. And Leadham will call for his catcher, Blosey, to come out to the rubber for a mound visit before Curtis steps in. And what a situation. Runners on first and second. The go-ahead run in the batter's box, tying run on base with speed at first. That's done. Eight to six, the score on the top of the ninth. And Matt Curtis in the right-handed batter's box. Hitless in his last two games as he takes a breaking ball low and away, and the count goes 1 0. A 327 hitter with an 884 OPS on this season for the sophomore from Malvern, Pennsylvania. As Leadham sets, runners on first and second. The 1 0 is lifted sky high into left center. Coming in is the center fielder Gregory, and he will track it down in shallow center for out number two. And down to their final out are the Bombers. It'll come down to Ethan Rothstein. Two 
Two outs in the top of the ninth inning. As Leadham looks to lock it down. Runners on first and second. First pitch to Rothstein is a breaking ball low and in. Rothstein with some mid-season woes. He's won for his last 15. 1 0 pitch. Fastball roped in a right field. Sending Seedham. Lead him back towards the wall. He ranges back and makes the play in front of the warning track to retire the side and end the ball game. What a crazy, chaotic win for the Rochester Yellow Jackets. 8 6 to take game one of this series. The Bombers, oh, so close so many times, but it was three home runs in this ball game for Rochester, which seals the deal. Alec Ellison, a solo shot. Luke Gregory, a two-run bomb. Sammy Bezstri, a two-run bomb. And eight to six, Rochester takes game one of the series, game one of the doubleheader to move to 14 and 12 in the season, eight and two in conference play. Bombers fall to nine and four, and those are huge implications in the standings. That'll sign things off here for game one. As looking at the Liberty League standings, a now seven and or eight and th two mark, I should say, for the Yellow Jackets, and a nine and four mark for the Bombers puts them neck and neck. But there's still two games left in this series. This is just game one. We're gonna have game two coming in about half an hour with first pitch set, and it felt like it could not get any crazier. But it felt like it kept on getting more wild from Towers Field here in Game 1. A wild Game 1, 8-6 victory for the University of Rochester. And that will sign things off, as I said, for Game 1. But we're going to have Game 2. Hopefully even more wild, fun, and chaotic from Towers Field when we come back. So again, signing off for Game 1. Keep it right here. Game 2 coming up on Bomber Sports. I'm Eli Fishman. I hope to see you in about 30 minutes for first pitch of Game 2.